Let's change the perspective of some images here inside of Photoshop. I'd like to step you through two examples. In the first one, I'll take this car image, drop it onto this billboard to produce this result just here. The second example, these flowers just here, into this frame just here to produce this result just here. Okay, so let's close this up and start from scratch. So here on my desktop, I'm going to grab that car and billboard graphic, drag them in like so. My car image, Command and Control A to select everything. Command and Control C to copy that to the clipboard. Over into the billboard image, Command and Control V to paste that in like so. So here in the layers panel, the billboard image is on the background. Layer one is our car. So layer one is selected. Edit, free transform. Now we're going to be using this command a lot guys. So I'm gonna be using the keyboard shortcut moving forward, which is Command or Control T. So let's activate free transform. Let's grab a corner, move it roughly into place, try and grab a second corner, and you can see all I end up doing is messing up the first one. So the first big takeaway today, guys, if we want to independently move the corners while in free transform mode, hold down the command or the control key. So while doing that, check this out. I can independently move these corners. So let me just get these roughly into place. And you can press either the enter or the return key to commit that, or tap the little tick mark just up here. So I'll do that to commit the transformation. So that's looking pretty good, but you can see if I zoom in, it's looking a little bit rough. So let's zoom out and enter free transform mode again. Command and control T. And we now have a big problem, guys. So even if I hold down command or control, you can see the actual transformation corner itself is nowhere near the actual corner of the block of pixels. Now it is worse on some corners, but it is a problem all around. So manipulating the corners like we just did with the command of the control key is fantastic the first time you're using free transform, but is clearly problematic using it the second or third or fourth times. So let me show you a better way to do this. I'll just press escape to get out of there. And actually let's just delete layer one altogether. Command and control V to paste the car in here again. Now, we want to turn this layer into a smart object. So here inside of the layers panel, don't be right mouse clicking on the thumbnail itself. Right mouse click on a non-thumbnail part of the layer and choose convert to smart object. Now visually, nothing has changed out here within our composition, but you can see this little icon popping up just here inside of the layers panel. That's telling us that this is indeed a smart object. And a smart object is basically that pixel information embedded inside of a file inside of our Photoshop file just here. Long story short, guys, this layer now, we can't hurt it. We can free transform it, can't harm those pixels. We can throw a filter at it, can't harm those pixels, which is fantastic. But what's even better again in our situation just here is we can now better manipulate those corners. Let me show you what I mean. Command or control T to go into free transform. Holding down the command or the control key, I'll quickly get those corners into place. Very rough, I know. Let's commit that by pressing enter or return. Now, let's go into free transform mode again. Command and control T. Fantastic, check this out. The corners now actually line up like we would expect them to. Now, again, this is a little rough. I'll just commit that transformation, but fantastic. So let me show you one more last time there, guys. Having converted this into a smart object, pressing command and control T now, we can easily manipulate those corners as many times as we like. And actually guys, just to complete this example, the car image, it's looking particularly vibrant and nice and contrasty, but you can see our background image just here. It's a little washed out because it's out here in the sun. So a few little ideas, a few little suggestions for how you could better blend this. Well, with layer one selected, which is the car, you do have your blend modes just up here, set to normal by default. I'll just mouse over a couple of these. You can see something like maybe the screen's looking pretty good. Well, that, that's uh, maybe a little bit more washed out than I was hoping for. So I might set these back to normal. And instead of playing with the blend modes, I'll come up to opacity and I might start to drop this. And this is getting more interesting because you can see the two layers are now better blending together. Actually, I'll just bring this up to 65, which was exactly what I had in my initial example. And what I like about this is if I turn off the car just here, so you can see there's some imperfections within the billboard, most obviously this little thing just here. When I turn the car back on, you can see those have nicely blended together. Okay, 
let's close this up and have a look at our second example. So I'm going to bring in the wall just here. And remember the aim is to get this flower image just here into this frame just here. Now remember the previous example where the second layer we converted into a smart object. Well, I'd like to show you a faster way to actually do that as opposed to copying and pasting and converting. So we've got our base layer open just here. If I come up to File, Place Embedded, and from my desktop, let's find flowers.jpg, choose Place, and then I'll just commit that place by hitting the tick mark just up here or pressing Enter or Return. And check this out. The flower information has indeed come in, but Photoshop has automatically converted that layer into a smart object. Fantastic. I'd like to show you a second way. So I'll just delete that layer. So out here on my desktop, I can see my flowers file just here. If I drag that straight in, and again, enter or return to commit that, Photoshop has again brought in that pixel information and converted it into a smart object as well. So there's two fantastic ways, guys. You can get your pixel information and simultaneously convert it into a smart object. So one was file place embedded, and the other was grabbing it and dragging it straight in. So Command Control T, holding down my Command Control key. Let's roughly get those into place. Commit that, and then again, just zooming in a little bit here. Let's clean that up just a touch. I won't make it perfect, but uh, we don't want it to look too terrible either, right? So that's looking pretty good. I'll commit that. And there we go, looking very nice. Now, one last trick I'd like to show you. You see this map board just here. I'd like to show you how we can quickly simulate it. It won't be perfect, but it might be close enough for what you need. So we've got the flowers layer just here. So a non-thumbnail and non-name part of the layer. That was terrible, I know. Basically, a blank part of the layer. If you double click on that, it will bring up the layer style dialog box. So I'll just cancel that for a quick second and move the image over so we can better see this. So not thumbnail, not name, double clicking on that part of the layer. Layer style dialog box. Let's jump into stroke. I'm going to add a nice large stroke here set to inside. And I've played with this ahead of time, of course, guys. So I'm going to set this straight to 95 pixels. And then I want to get a color that matches this. So rather than coming down a color and messing around with this by hand, having jumped into that color section, I'm just going to, with the eyedropper, come out here and sample that color from the other frame. Choosing OK, choosing OK. There we go. That's the result just there. So that's the original image just there. And there is our flower layer. And that's before the effect and after the effect. Okay guys, I hope that uh, helps you out with your distorting of the perspective of elements here inside of Photoshop. Catch you later.